Hello and welcome back to another Mac Tech Tech. Today we have another pre-con upgrade guide for you from Duskmorn, featuring Endless Punishment, helmed by Valgavoth, Harrower of Souls. So Valgavoth is a Rakdos commander for four mana. You're getting a four-four flyer with Ward Two. Whenever an opponent takes damage for the first time on their turn, you're going to get a plus one plus one counter on Valgavoth, and you're going to draw a card. So this actually makes our game plan for this deck super simple. We're looking to add a bunch of ways to force damage onto each opponent on each of their turns, getting three power on our commander every single round, and drawing three extra cards. As always, we're going to go ahead and cut out 10 cards, add in 10 cards that raise that synergy, raise that game plan, and uh, hopefully leads us to victory. Let's get started, shall we? Starting with those 10 cards to cut, we're actually going to start off with Sign in Blood. Uh, Sign in Blood is a fine way to draw cards in black, two black mana, Target player, generally yourself, gets to draw two cards, lose two life. Now, although it's a fine card, we actually have a ton of card draw that doesn't cost us life. In fact, it's really costing our opponent's life. So, I don't feel like we need Sudden Blood. Sudden Blood is sort of a do more of what we're already doing. If it were instant speed so we could hit an opponent with it on their turn, maybe we'd keep it. Uh, but even then, you generally want to target yourself with a Sudden Blood. So, I'm happy to cut it. Chaos Warp. So, Chaos Warp is going to follow that up. It's a little risky biscuits, right? You could remove a threat, but have a bigger threat pop out. I know that doesn't always happen, but it's definitely not my favorite piece of removal, so I'm happy to let it go as well. Braids Arisen Nightmare. So, Braids is actually kind of a tough cut. Uh, we could sacrifice something at our end step and force each opponent to sacrifice something that shares a type with it. If they choose not to, they're going to lose two life and we're going to draw a card. So, Briggs is actually super strong, but it happens at our end step, so we're never going to get our commander to trigger off of it. Are there better cuts out there? There might be. You know, what would you have cut in lieu of Braids? Let me know down below. Morbid Opportunist. So, whenever one or more creatures die, we're going to draw a card that only triggers once a turn. We're not forcing a lot of sacks on our own board. I don't feel like we're forcing a lot of sacks on our opponent's boards. So, for that reason, I'm happy to cut the Morbid Opportunist. Definitely not bad card draw, but again, I feel like our commander, with the synergies we're adding, is going to keep our hand pretty full at all times. Combustible Gearhulk is going to follow that up. A 6-6 six, six for 6 with first strike, so not bad, not bad. When they enter... Uh, an opponent could let us draw three cards. If they don't, we mill three, deal damage equal to the value of those cards to an opponent. Uh, here's the thing. Again, card draw. Great. Damage. Great. It's not happening on our opponent's turn, right? Which is what we want. So, again, I'm, I'm pretty happy to cut Combustible Gearhulk. You know, it's a timing situation, so they're gone. Solemn Simulacrum, uh, a.k.a. the Sad Robot. Easy cut, honestly. Again, they are a fine card in any commander deck, but they're not really specifically doing what this deck wants, and we're looking to really up that synergy. Florian Voldaren Scion. So Florian is a 3-3 three, three for 3. They do have first strike. Thinking of our second main, we're going to look at the top X cards, where X is the number, uh, the amount of life, rather, that an opponent lost. And, you know, play the exiled card you know, that turn, which is fine, right? Especially with our commander being a flyer, right? It has some evasion. This could be good card selection for us. But I think most of the damage we want to deal, at least early on, is going to be during our opponent's turns and not so much on our own. And then at a certain point, we really just want to start... I'd, I'd go as far as to say one-shotting some of these opponents, Mindstone is going to follow that up. It's, again, a fine, generically okay mana rock, but it's not what we really want here. The fact that we can pay one to tap it and sack it and, like, draw a card is fine, but, again, with the card draw we have built in off of our commander, you know, I'm not overly concerned about having cards in our hand. Vile Smasher the Fierce. Three costs, two, three. Whenever we cast our first spell each turn, we're going to choose an opponent at random, and have 
Vile Smasher deal damage equal to that player or Planeswalker they control. Um, and I honestly just don't feel like the deck has enough instants to justify doing this, again, because of how we're trying to win, right? Which is dealing a ton of damage on our opponent's turns. Last up is Stormfist Crusader. So Stormfist Crusader is a 2 cost 2-2 two, two with Menace at our upkeep. Everyone's going to lose a life and draw a card, um, which is fine. But again, the damage is being dealt on our turn, which isn't when we want the damage, so they could go. Let's take a look at some of the cards we have set to replace those, though. We're going to start off with an easy one, and that's Revenge of Ravens. So it's going to almost always be tempting to attack us, right? Our commander will almost always be tapped from having attacked them. Uh, so coming back at us, giving us a little bit of the clap back, makes sense. Revenge of Ravens is like, hey, just know that if you do so, you're going to lose a life for each creature you swing. We're going to gain a life, right? So we're making up some of that damage anyways. And that trigger is going to buff our commander, give us some card draw, an all-around win-win for us. In a similar, more this is guaranteed to hit everybody kind of category, we have Underworld Dreams. So for three black, we have an enchantment. Whenever an opponent draws a card, we're going to deal one damage to them. So they have a draw step, they're going to draw those cards, we're going to damage them up a little bit, and our commander is going to get a little beefier and draw us a card. Huzzah! Descent into Avernus. So Descent really kind of steps on the gas with this kind of a strategy. Right, we do have a lot of burn effects, a lot of like small ping effects, and this is like, no, nah, we're gonna pour gasoline on this, dial it up to 11. Three mana enchantment, and our upkeep against two counters. Each player is gonna create some treasure tokens, and Avernus is gonna deal X damage, where X is the number of descent counters on it. So you might be thinking, Mech, this isn't dealing damage on your opponent's turns. No, it's not, but it is recurrable damage that increases every turn. So I think Descent, Descent into a Avernus still makes sense in the deck, right? We're, we're burning faster than, you know, they're possibly keeping up with. Hearthborn Battler. Three mana, he's the two, three. Whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, he gets to deal two damage to a target opponent. So this is actually pretty great. Uh, anytime any player casts their second spell, a little bit of damage. Obviously, if it's our opponents casting two spells on their own turn, we're dealing two damage to them. But also on our turn when we're you know casting two spells or in another opponent's casting two spells, right? We get to choose where that damage goes. And so I think the Hearthborn Battler is phenomenal. This is actually a new card out of Dustmorn. So Razorkin Needlehead. 2-2 two, two for two red. Has first strike on your turn, which is fine, but more importantly, when an opponent draws a card, they're going to deal damage. So this and Underworld Dreams are kind of the same effect. One's on an enchantment, one's on a body, but both are good. Barbed Wire. So this is old school tech, beginning of each player's upkeep. They're going to lose one, and we could go ahead and pay two to prevent the next one damage that would be dealt by the wires on our own turn. Uh, are we always going to use that second effect? I don't think we are, uh, but the fact that it's going to hit everyone on their upkeep and really pump our commander and give us some card draw, I think it's nice. Polluted Bonds. So for five mana, whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, they lose two, we gain two. Five mana is a little expensive, right? I think a lot of our other burn spells are more in like the two to three kind of category. Revenge of Ravens was four. Uh, but at five, I think it's still pretty good, right? Our opponents need to play lands. They're not going to skip the land drop just to avoid, you know, pumping our commander. If they choose to, right, they're still setting themselves behind. So I'm pretty okay with it. Roiling Vortex. So two mana enchantment. Each player's upkeep, deal one damage to them. This includes ourselves, but that's fine. Also, if an opponent goes to cast a free spell, we're going to deal five damage to them. This is super huge against any kind of, like, cascade effects, you know, things of that nature. 
any kind of like reduction effects where it's like, oh yeah, I got to cheat this out for free because I have like 12 artifacts. It's like, cool, go ahead and take five. Also, we have the option to pay a single red to make it so opponents can't gain life during a turn. And, you know, we kind of need that in this burn, right? It's very possible for a life gain deck to kind of run away and be like, listen, you're not going to burn me out. And we're like, no, 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 you don't gain life. Rug of Smothering. So Rug of Smothering is a nice little body for three mana. Whenever, whenever a player casts a spell, they're going to lose one life for each spell they've already cast that turn. So the first one won't deal anything, but the second one will ping them for one, and they're a nice like little 1-3 flying body, which could get in for like a little bit of chump damage, maybe just be like a good enough blocker against some like little weenies. Either way, here for the effect more so than the body itself. And last but not least is Painful Quandary. So Painful Quandary is another kind of expensive, we're at five mana with it. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, they lose five life unless they discard a card. Uh, both effects are strong. Obviously, we're here for that five life. And at a certain point, right, they'll effectively be forced to top deck if they've been discarding along the way. And if not, that five damage, one goes a long way, right? Eight of those just wins. And if they choose to take the damage, you know, we're also getting bigger. If they choose to discard the card, well, we're burning fuel. So I'm happy either way. Normally this is the point where I would go into some honorable mentions. I don't really have any prepared for this deck at all. So we are gonna wrap up the deck tech kind of quickly today. But, you know, if you enjoyed this content, you felt like you got a little bit of value out of it, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, do all the algorithm things. As always, I am Mechanized Minion, AKA the Energy King, wishing you good luck with your builds.